Welcome back to Good Bobadet Decoded. Today, we are, uh, we're, right now I'm joined uh, by Alex Melikov, CEO of Equilibrium. And if, yeah, there he is. Good to see you, Alex. Take it away. Good to see you. Thanks very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning to those who are watching us overseas. And uh, I'm super excited to, uh, to be here and uh, to share some details on what we're building at Equilibrium and uh, how exactly we're leveraging the advantages of the Polkadot technology. Um, so firstly, let me uh, kick this off uh, with uh, my self uh, introduction. Um, so I'm Alex, the CEO uh, at the Equilibrium team. I'm also the co-founder. Uh, and um, actually, uh, first of all, let me give you a little bit of context of what exactly we're building at Equilibrium. Uh, so in nutshell, Equilibrium is the first decentralized interoperable conglomerate of DeFi products. Uh, it's um, actually designed to uh, solve the problem of uh, liquidity fragmentation in DeFi uh, thanks to interoperability delivered by the underlying uh, platform, blockchain platform, uh, Polkadot, respectively. And um, actually, we are um, um, uh, um, we, we have designed the system, which is uh, introducing a bunch of um, um, uh, DeFi use cases united in a one-stop shop. Um, including pool lending, uh, decentralized stablecoin. We have uh, a native decentralized stablecoin embedded into the system. Uh, it's back to dollar called EQD. We also have uh, the functionality of synthetic asset generation. Uh, we will be delivering the functionality of the professional rates uh, uh, decentralized exchange, which will be cross chain and deliver uh, the margin trading uh, almost out of the box. Um, so I also uh, wanted to touch on. Uh, several milestones that we have achieved so far. Uh, so first of all, uh, we have um, collected uh, 250,000 dots, being almost the first project that rolled out its uh, first phase of our chain list offering on Polkadots. We'll be using this, um, uh, these funds um, as a fraction of our further bids at the auction, at the parachain auctions um, um, on, on, the, on the Polkadot network. And uh, basically, uh, the second thing I wanted also to emphasize here that uh, we have announced recently our plans with regards to Kusama network. Uh, we'll be launching the Jinchira parachain there, which will be inheriting the experimental uh, spirits of, uh, of Kusama. And I will touch on that in the course of the presentation. So here I wanted to make a transition to my today's topic, uh, which is uh, bail bailouts versus auctions. I mentioned uh, that we have uh, basically built up the um, quite innovative uh, architecture, which is underpinning the product line that we are create, creating on, the, on top of the uh, substrate technology. And uh, basically these innovations um, are lying in certain aspects. Uh, so first of all, we have developed the risk management system um, and a quite innovative one. And we are taking quite innovative approach in terms of the uh, debt management. And um, actually, uh, um, here, first of all, I wanted to um, um, outline the problem, uh, the problem of debt liquidation in DeFi. Um, and actually, this problem um, um, exists. Um, so first of all, um, I wanted to start off with um, the explanation of over which is common practice for the overall DeFi space. So basically, um, uh, users who are taking out loans in, in, in DeFi protocols, they are providing uh, worth enough uh, collateral, worth enough to cover the potential losses, uh, and um, it's uh, it's actually over cultivation. And uh, simultaneously, um, there uh, most of the loans in DeFi, um, as we all know, has uh, have no maturity, but uh, they actually have um, uh, the borrowers actually commit to certain critical cultivation levels uh, simultaneously. And uh, if it comes to certain price movements on the markets, uh, some price drops or whatever, borrowers actually can get liquidated if the consolidation levels of their loans are dropping uh, below certain, certain levels. So actually we have two ways of solving uh, the problem of debt liquidation. Uh, if we look at the per se at the real world uh, use cases, uh, we can basically see that there uh, there is, first of all, the, um, um, the option of uh, redistributing of debt obligations in the case of borrower's default. Um, if it comes to, per se, uh, some guarantors or whatever insurer, insurers who are taking over the debt obligations for defaulted borrowers, uh, we can deal with uh, certain debt, um, uh, debt obligation redistribution. 
so the second approach is actually um, the sell-off uh, of debts. Um, and um, um, for example, if we also refer to some real world use cases, for example, if you uh, have some mortgage loan and you fail to uh, pay back this loan at some point, um, actually bank or whatever financial institution would, will seize your, uh, your property, your some real estate and sell off through, through some auctions. So this approach of for sell offs, um, uh, either via sell offs with discounts or auctions, is quite common uh, common practice in the current DeFi space. And actually, auctioning um, is a really bad idea, and I explain you why. So first of all, the auction itself may fail um, uh, due to different circumstances. Um, there might be clogs in, in the underlying network, for example, some bugs in uh, code or architecture of the protocol. Um, at, the, um, at the end of the day, there might no participants show up at the auction uh, due to some significant market turmoil, and basically there will be no um, uh, auction participants who uh, who are willing to buy out debt even at a discount through, through this auction. So the second problem here is the that the the debt uh, during the auction is staying in the system, which means that um, it also like the system takes the risk of potential slippage because uh, the the price of of collateral or assets uh, which uh, um, have to be liquidated are uh, actually remain in the system, right? And uh, the overall system solvency is uh, under significant risk. So just for you to understand the scale of this problem, um, I, I have put together the um, sort of the breakdown of the um, DeFi protocols in this space, uh, specifically on Ethereum, uh, which are using uh, this type of uh, uh, mechanism for debt liquidation in, in their, their technology. So all these protocols, including MakerDAO, Aave, Compounds, InstaDAP are in top 10. And overall, they're holding 42 billion of total value locked, which means that they, they actually have over 50% of TVL and Ethereum locks in, in, their, in, their, in their smart contracts. So actually, MakerDAO is using auctioning and so they already um, actually experienced certain uh, problems with that back in last year during the uh, Black Thursday. And um, Aave and Compound, they're also using sell-offs and discounts in their protocols. And uh, just imagine that in some uh, price shock movements, um, um, like all this uh, tremendous amount of liquidity will influx the market uh, through, through auctions or sell-offs. It will be really disaster. So um, fortunately, we have the solution for that. And um, actually, this solution we are, um, is, is, is bailouts. Uh, we are uh, actually the first protocol to introduce um, uh, this kind of uh, uh, solution to, to, to debt management, uh, which means that in, in basic terms, we have a separate liquidity pool in the system uh, called bailout pool, which is used to, um, um, to, uh, to basically um, to, to manage these, these debt. These, these debt. And um, basically, we introduced this special user role, which is called Bailsman. And Bailsman, they are providing liquidity into this bailout pool in advance. And they're actually earning a significant fraction of interest paid by borrowers. So uh, actually, similar to other DeFi protocols, the most of uh, potential losses, like expected ones, are covered by over-cultization in, uh, in our protocol as well. However, if it comes to certain liquidations due to significant price movements or price drops, um, uh, billsmen are actually uh, coming into, into play. So um, if particular loan is getting liquidated, uh, in, in, in our case, uh, these debt obligations are simply transferred from borrowers to, the, to, to, to bailsmen. So bailsmen, they're taking over these obligations and it means that there are no forced actions required in the course of, uh, in, in the case of some, you know, margin calls or whatever debt obligations in our system. Um, this actually makes system more balanced and um, represents less risk compared to to auctioning uh, in, in in the distress markets. Obviously, bailsmen they can withdraw funds from the bailout pool only in case of um, uh, debt repayment. Um, um, 
respectively um, uh, will proportion to their their stakes in the in the bailout pool. So um, actually, here's here I wanted to also to um, uh, to mention our risk based approach, which we are taking versus and it's opposed to the utilization approach because we need a certain um, a system of checks and balances to incentivize um, bailsmen to provide liquidity in the in the bailout pool, and specifically if uh, um, um, the bailout pool becomes, uh, and the overall system becomes less solvent, um, the interest rate in our case is, is fluctuating. So this risk-based approach is inherited from the world of traditional finance, and um, actually it's based on our risk management system, which, is, which can hardly be implemented on any other um, sort of blockchain protocol, um, rather than on Polkadot, which has uh, the embedded functionality of chain workers and um, uh, since uh, we we actually perform a lot of computations in terms of this approach, it, it cannot be uh, built on any uh, other other protocols uh, uh, like standalone substrate, uh, stand standalone uh, blockchains like like Ethereum. So if you compare this risk-based approach to utilization approach, and utilization approach is basically the most common practice for the DeFi protocols, uh, like for Compound and Aave, uh, when uh, the borrowing cost is actually uh, depending on how much borrowed from from the pool. Uh, Risk-based risk approach is really different, and uh, it's of the underlying um, underlying. I, what do I got to do? Hi. <laughs> Hi there. Um, we we have been having some technical difficulties just trying to get through it. We've lost the audio from Alex uh, going over his very, very interesting. Uh, I think I'm getting him back in here right now. Um, let's see if, if let's see. I'll just try to, to moderate a bit just in so, time. Right. Just want to remind you to uh, continue to add your questions to the chat um, while we get Alex back on. Um, it's pretty interesting. Hey guys, can you hear me? There? Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah, I apologize for that. Yeah, no worries. This happens. We're in a, we're in a live show here. Um, technical difficulties, especially when you're trying to set up three stages at once all around the world. Yeah, I yeah, well, just guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yep, I can hear you. Yeah, well, I apologize for that. Seems like I was uh, was dropping out for a sec. Um, no problem. Yeah, just, so just pick I, up I, where you I, left off. I was, I was actually, yeah, I, I was actually covering uh, some aspects of risk-based approach that we are taking at, at Equilibrium, which is opposed to the utilization approach, uh, which is common for the most of um, uh, liquidity protocols uh, in the current DeFi space, uh, like Compounds or Aave. And this approach cannot be implemented on 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 any other blockchain uh, on, on, on in, the, in the current um, uh, the current technologies, rather than on Polkadot, which is supporting the off-chain computations. And um, actually, um, I, I wanted to um, here to make the, the transition to. Um, to, 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 to make a transition to, to why exactly it's hardly to implement this on the existing networks. So uh, first of all, in order to make this happen, uh, we need to uh, perform, as I said, uh, a decent amount of real-time computation um, of, of for financial metrics. Um, secondly, we definitely need certain cross-chain operations, uh, which are um, possible just in Polkadot thanks to uh, its bridges, but it's uh, almost impossible in any other networks, so specifically in this decentralized way. Uh, we do need to manage uh, single portfolios versus uh, client portfolios versus single collateral positions in our protocol, which also requires certain resources. And uh, for better user experience, uh, we, we have implemented certain automated operations, which are uh, also almost impossible on uh, other existing networks. So um, here's actually the breakdown of some specific technical advantages of Polkadot that we're using um, at Equilibrium. Uh, so first of all, we are leveraging the off-chain workers technology because we're using them for uh, certain, um, certain uh, heavy real-time computing 
for improvements of user experience and for uh, consequent portfolio of currencies. Um, obviously, you guys know that um, 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 uh, the substrate technology itself um, um, offers certain flexibility in terms of um, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, basically implementing certain functionality. You can uh, customize the runtime of your blockchain, and we are also heavily leveraging that in in in, in Equilibrium and and Jinchir, which is our Kusama-based parachain. And uh, basically, um, we have modified the balance palette uh, because it's actually used in our case not just for token accounting and like user balances on certain uh, addresses, but it also delivers the lending functionality almost out of the box. Uh, we also um, have done certain runtime customization. Uh, we actually uh, have custom transaction fees in our blockchain, and uh, all this tremendous amount of flexibility is obviously not achievable on any other networks uh, and some, you know, developer in, in environments. So, uh, just to wrap up, I also wanted um, um, to mention our Jinshira. Um, uh, Jinshira Parachain, which is supposed to be the canary network for equilibrium. And actually it will be sharing the experimental spirits of the Kusama network. And uh, we are super excited uh, approaching the um, uh, parachain auctions on, on the Kusama uh, network. Um, and we definitely expect to bring certain value to the Kusama community with uh, introducing our Jinshira Parachain, which will have um, Sort of uh, more functionality, uh, more sort of experimental functionality compared to to, to equilibrium. They have uh, a wide variety of assets um, actually plugged into 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 this parachain, and it will also have a special set of system parameters for uh, those traders who are used to taking uh, more risk uh, during uh, their 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 operations. So. Um, yeah, um, so basically here's, uh, here's our contact details. Uh, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you have any further questions. Uh, we do have our uh, functionality um, up and running on the test net. You can check it out on app.equilibrium.io. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for having me here. Um, and I'm happy to take your questions, if any. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, really interesting to Think about going when myself going back to the early days of Bitcoin and learning about, you know, a Satoshi's message in the first block, thinking about bailouts, you know, and then seeing how you turned it around and uh, turning it into something that can be positive as if it's put on a decentralized scale. So, how did you come up with this? What was your first thought about making turning bailouts, bailouts from a bad thing into a good thing? Um, yeah, so so we actually like again we we looked at uh, the world of traditional finance uh, where bailouts is a quite you know common practice and it works for good, and we thought that it would be awesome to implement that um, uh, in, um, in in our product line. Um, however, um, you know based on our previous experience building on other blockchains. Uh, we could not do that uh, due to different technical congestions or limitations. So eventually, we decided to, uh, like, as we as we saw the opportunity to implement that on Polkadot, we just uh, uh, decided to jump on that right away. Cool. Um, <clears throat> another question we have is: Is there a market for leveraged options in Equilibrium? No, not yes. We're thinking about that. And moreover, we're thinking of rolling out some other interesting derivative products. Um, however, not, 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 not at this point. For now, we're working on the um, um, some core functionality of our decentralized exchange. And um, um, actually, it's supposed to be, um, uh, first of all, the margin trading functionality and spot markets uh, rolled out, uh, uh, first of all. But uh, then we'll look uh, we'll look at uh, implementation, some other uh, ideas that we have on our roadmap. Okay. Um, one thing you noted is that you're using off-chain workers for UX improvements. Now, off-chain workers are a feature in Substrate that load a lot of computation off the chain uh, so that you can have higher throughput normally. But uh, how are you, do you know how you're using the off-chain workers for UX improvements? Is that something quite novel? 
Um, yeah, just just very very simple example here. Um, so we do have uh, certain um, uh, sort of vesting functionality, for example, for our tokens, uh, and uh, we have implemented sort of uh, automated uh, claiming for 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 tokens, which um, uh, can be utilized by our users. But um, actually, based on on this example, we can do uh, various uh, various things in our product line as well. Uh, so that uh, we can just trigger certain functionality within our product line to make it automated. Okay, another question we have is um, in your slide about the uh, transaction fees. I think there was a point about only invalid abusal technical transactions to be charged. Does that mean transaction fees will be free or very low at least? Um, so. This part was actually related to some specifically technical transactions for Oracle providers, for example, who will be feeding fees into um, into our protocol. And so obviously, in order to eliminate the risk of some abusal transactions, uh, we will be charging for those those transactions uh, which uh, which failed. However, uh, for some, uh, you know, uh, goodwill participants who are actually providing some uh, valid information, this transaction will be free of charge. Okay, cool. And one last question is, can we earn or buy the shirt you're wearing? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Look, we, we, we expect to uh, produce some uh, uh, substantial amounts of swag and uh, basically um, uh, provides our community with the opportunity to take it from us. Okay, well, great. <laughs> Thanks so much for your talk, uh, Alex. And uh, we'll be having a break right now, so stay tuned. Thanks very much for having on. Thanks, bye-bye.